think wellness is sort of wholeness of sort of mind, body, and spirit. It's the ability to, um, to take your gifts that Creator gave you and do what you need to do with your life with those things to the best of your ability. Whatever teachings you have, that's wellness. We don't really have the wellness that the old ones used to have at one time. One, because they trained their loved ones. They taught them physics, they taught them spirit. In fact, a lot of uh, our society, scientists are finally catching up with a lot of our tribal science, and they're getting blown away. Historically, Native people have experienced um, a lot of trauma and a lot of events that impact them and their health in tremendous ways, like genocide and massacres, Indian boarding school. Those kind of events are very traumatic for people, and when you have those events over many generations, they're going to impact people's well-being, their spirit, their physical health, their mental health. Native people before the colonization, and this is according to the best science that the Western people have, is that we had actually quite complex cities and quite complex science. We had wonderful public health and natural practices and traditions. And it wasn't until uh, a lot of foreign diseases were introduced to this hemisphere that people's health status started to decline. Another probably even more devastating impact of colonization was just how Native people's life world, Native people's science, their culture and their traditions were absolutely denigrated by the Europeans and Westerners. The Europeans who came over had to set up Native people as less than rational and less than human in order to justify absolutely stealing this land. I think there's justifiable and understandable mistrust of our communities, of any university-based systems, educational systems in general, because of the boarding school experience in particular. And also the legacy of the horrendous things that science has done at the expense of indigenous people. There's a legacy in healthcare systems and in institutions in general for Native people not to, not to trust. And you know what? I don't think people should. I expect the communities to have healthy skepticism about who we are and what we're doing. Europeans came to teach us and they didn't honor the, what we could teach them. That's a negative statement. I'm taught not to do negative statements, so, so, but that's a true statement. I think our people have survived because we remembered the original teachings we each had as tribal people. I also think that uh, we were pragmatic people and when we saw things that could make our lives better uh, for ourselves and for, uh, for others, I think we took them. We were always exchanging ideas uh, and so I think that that's how we survived too. It was a bit of collaboration and picking out the best ideas of what we had. Science has always been with us, so bringing our traditional scientists and our traditional elders together with um, our Native colleagues who are Western trained as well and putting all of these tools together to help our people eradicate health disparities. And it's international in scope because we're a global community and the reality is colonization has affected our peoples all over the world. It's not as if the ideas that we're looking at at the universities are new to indigenous communities or that people haven't been thinking about health disparities or wellness for generations and centuries. We don't want to do projects that uh, just benefit a researcher somewhere or benefit an institution. It has to benefit the people, that's the bottom line. It has to ease our suffering. It has to be able to help promote our future generations health and wellness. That's what this work is about, is helping our communities. One piece of it has to do with community mandates. That instead of the Western approach of, I have a good idea, let me imp impose that on another people, and changing that to say, what is the community really interested in? What issues do they want to solve? And to use their strengths and talents so that the community owns the whole process. That's the charge of the Institute. The reason I'm here is 
to really think about the health of our communities for my children, for my grandchildren, and for my great-grandchildren. For me as a Native person, I come from a community that um, supports each other. I come from a family that nurtures each other. Uh, we have a responsibility to give to each other in whatever way we can. At the Institute, I find that there is a family unit. And with a family unit, there's um, ways of changing, there's ways of knowing, there's ways of developing new ways of responding to um, problems, to health issues, because we are there for the community, but we're also there for ourselves in terms of our own healing and wellness. The very best 21st century universities will measure their success not in terms of who they exclude, but rather by their inclusivity, who they include. The mandate says that we're looking at the health of people, in, in all of our people in all of the five states. And 25% of the American Indian Alaska Native population lives in our five state area. That is the mandate of the law, so we'll, I'll consider that a treaty of sorts. And ethically, I think that's also the right thing to, you know, to do. As Indigenous people, we have skills and interests and teachings related to the resources of this area as well. And I think we have a vested interest in this process and that the university um, needs to uh, acknowledge that. Everybody benefits from this. Everybody's science improves. Everybody's wellness improves. Now we're saying, well, it's not a matter of us asking permission to be at the table. It's that, no, we, we need to be at this table. If we want a better society, we want a healthier world, we have to be at the table. And so we're doing that. If you include Indigenous people in research, then that will beget Indigenous researchers who then do further Indigenous research. We hope that it's going to lead to this fierce flowering of uh, Aboriginal intellect and health knowledge. Tribal communities are taking much more responsibility over the production of knowledge about Native people. So they can assure that uh, the questions that are asked and the research that is done has a positive impact on the reservation. They also make sure that any opportunities for research on the reservation are paired with training for Native people. And these opportunities often are pipeline opportunities for high school kids or college kids who might have never thought that they had the ability to do research. It was just incredible for me to have mentors that were indigenous that pulled me up and said, you can do this. And from the time I dropped out of high school to the time of my PhD, I had indigenous women that led me along. Getting native students into doctoral education, uh, it, there's a tremendous amount of barriers out there. What we can do from the inside is to make it normative that we are going to graduate 500 Native doctoral students. For me to be around Indigenous scholars um, gives me hope because the work that I do is for the children. My idea is that the research and working with the Institute will help assist in healing for our next generations. When I walk down those corridors, I find uh, a group of engaged and vibrant people that have actually transformed this place. It's a place that makes it possible for those young scholars not only to survive, but to thrive in academia. One of the most critical things in creating safety is having a critical mass of indigenous people so that when I go to work, for example, at the Institute, and I walk down my hallway, I know there are indigenous people in all those offices, and I can smell sage, and I can know that, you know, if I'm experiencing a colonial moment, <laughs> you know, that I can go down and knock on the door of my, you know, friend and my sister and say, I need, a, I need some support here, and I hope that our students feel that way.
Erie has an uh, incredible opportunity and an incredible responsibility to really create that safe space for Indigenous knowledge to flourish and to be circulated. All of the uh, knowledge and the uh, research and the theories that come out of that space are going to speak to the lived experience of Indigenous people because that's where we're hoping that our research and our theory will emanate from, but it will at the same time be accepted by Western academia because that's where it was produced. I absolutely know for a fact that happiness comes from um, being able to give back as well. And I know that Native communities have so much to offer the world. And I think Native people need to be afforded the opportunity to give back to the world and to share our wisdom and our insights with the world. I think that would be the highest level of wellness for Indigenous people. If you realize that one person can't always uh, in, encourage other people to feel confident uh, of their place in the world, but a whole group of people with the same mindset can, can do wonders. We have a big family of people who are going to help go uphill. If we have to fight our way upstream, we can do that because there are lots of us. Yeah. Hey, uh...